This right here is a four foot tall piece of foam that I've carved into a Santa and back there is as well. That one turned out a lot cleaner than this one. We also have a few other mistakes. We're gonna be jumping into all of that over the five different things that you need to know about cutting foam with your CNC router. All right, so the first thing that you need to consider when cutting foam is what type of foam are you cutting? This right here is insulation board meant for use in construction. It is one inch thick. It's this green stuff. Anybody can pick it up from Lowe's or Home Depot. It is readily available, which is why we're using it today. Just like with milling wood, whether it's hardwood or softwood or plywood, there are a lot of different things that you need to think about when interacting with the material. So the type of foam really is important. This right here is a very rigid foam. It is meant for construction. It's one inch thick. It's got an R value, I think, of five. And it's meant to be able to sheathe the outside of houses for insulation purposes. It's very dense. It's very easy to scratch, you can easily put your fingernail in it, and it breaks. Whereas other foams might not have these qualities. They might be very soft, they might just bend, they might not snap, but the reason that I chose this today is because it's very millable because of how rigid it is. So since we are going to be using this foam today, the rest of the four points that we're going to be going over are going to pertain to this type of foam. So if you're using any other type of foam, like an upholstery foam, you're probably going to have to change things depending on the type of foam that you're using, especially when we get to the feeds and speeds portion. Now for this type of foam, the tooling is not going to be the most important thing on this list, but it is incredibly important. I chose to cut this project both with our downtown Jenny, which is one of the only three bits that you need to see and see with me, to be able to show you that you can still get really, really great results using the tooling that you already have. And then I went ahead and used this brand new O-Flu bit from Jenny Bits. This is a quarter inch bit and it is up shear. It comes in up and down cut, but for this one in particular, we're going to be using up cut. I did change all the feeds and speeds, but we'll be getting into that in a second. This one is more universally understood to be good with foam and with plastic because of its geometry and the way that it's meant to be able to cut things. The downtown Jenny is going to be great for hogging out a lot of material in hardwood, even with plywood, it's really going to be great for more solid materials, but the O-Flute is designed in a way that's going to make ejecting material a lot easier, and it's also going to make for a lot cleaner cut. But you can see in a little while that I did one thing exactly the wrong way, and I got horrible results. Actually, I got a lot better results with the Downtown Jenny with regular feeds and speeds than I did with this because I just didn't do it quite right. But we'll get into that in one second. Right now it is Christmas in July, which means that the contest is still going on. If you're needing to stock up on any bits, go ahead and jump over to JennyBits.com. If you use the code Hamilton, you can get a little bit off of your order, but you'll also be entered to win, where you could be one of the three winners of one of these Oflu bits, as well as a complete year-long membership to cncwithme.com. Go ahead and check it out. Make sure you use the code Hamilton at checkout. Number three is gonna be work holding. And work holding describes how we're actually holding the foam on the CNC machine. So as our bit is going through it, it is not moving around and we're able to get nice, crisp, clean results. And there are a few different ways to do this. The best by far is going to be vacuum work holding, which I've got a video coming on that in a few weeks, which I'm really excited about. But I know that for a lot of people that is not an option. So for me, I really like to use double-sided tape, specifically for the majority of my projects. But today I went ahead and just put in some brad nails at a slight angle. I went ahead and put in a few of those brad nails just to make sure that the piece didn't move around and I was very happy with the first one. The second one, not so much. I think that the first one gave me a whole lot of confidence in how I was cutting. And this one, you can see that my Z height is set at like one hundredths of an inch. So it's not very much at all. So as it was cutting, it slowly was rising up. And as the machine was moving around, it started intercepting the material. So next time I definitely will be using double-sided tape, but not a lot of it at all. Later, once we're going into the feeds and speeds, we'll talk about why I had to change things up. But I did a test piece and I just used double-sided tape on it and it worked perfect almost a little bit too good. So much so that if you do use double-sided tape, I would just cut out little squares, use it sparingly. I definitely wouldn't use large strips across the back because that can be a really easy way to actually snap your foam when you're trying to take it off the CNC machine. So I would use double-sided tape next time and I would use it very, very sparingly. Number four is gonna be feeds and speeds. Now this is something that I really don't bring up on a weekly basis because we use a very standardized set of feeds and speeds for the exact three bits that we use on the channel, which is available for all CNC with me members. But when we are bringing new and different types of bits onto the channel, I do wanna be able to focus on feeds and speeds that are going to be better suited for them. Now, like I said, we did use our downtown Jenny to be able to cut out this project and we are running things at 130 inches per minute with an RPM of 18,000. I also wanna note that we had a step down set on this at 0.125 inches or an eighth of an inch. Now for the o Genie, this is the very first time that I've used this bit and I had no idea what to expect as far as the feeds and speeds. So instead of using Carveco's very reserved feeds and speeds in their database, I went ahead and just threw something at the wall to see if it worked. 
I set my feed rate at 250 inches per minute, and then I set my spindle speed at 24,000 RPM. The reason that I did this is because I wanted to make sure that the bit was moving very quickly. There are a few different things that you need to pay attention to with your feeds and speeds. First and foremost, the faster that it's moving in the foam, the better off you're going to be. That's going to help with chip removal, and with that chip removal, it's also going to help not recutting the chips. If you're recutting the chips, there's an opportunity that you're going to be melting the material that you're cutting, which is very easy to do on foam. Also went ahead and doubled the step down at 0.25 inches. Pretty sure I could have made that lower, but the pocketing that we were doing specifically was at a quarter of an inch, so I really didn't see a need to lower it much more than that. So moving fast is something that I really wanted to do on this machine. Now things were working great until they weren't. And it's funny because I've been playing around with it for a long time. That brings us to number five, cutting direction. So cutting direction is really important when you are milling things, specifically with the types of bits that you're using and then the type of material that you're looking to cut. When talking about cutting direction, we're talking about climb milling versus conventional milling. As your bit is spinning in the collet, the machine is either going to be moving it into the material or alongside the material. And that is the difference between climb and conventional milling. Now I don't have any type of like fancy little things to show you right now, so I'm not gonna get too into it, but I have been playing around with it a whole lot. I found for me specifically that I get much, much better edges on plywood when I'm using conventional milling. So I've pretty much moved everything over to conventional. When I set up the feeds and speeds for the O'Jenny, I ran things as climb milling, and I was sorely disappointed by how things turned out. So much so that I ran it again, just a little test piece, and I got perfect results when I was doing conventional milling. That's something that I would really pay attention to because when I went through for the very first time with the downtown Jenny, I'd left things on climb milling and I got what I felt were really, really great results. This right here is the Santa Claus that I cut with the downtown Jenny. I have not cleaned this up. I have not sanded anything besides the outside of it from the very back where the bit didn't go all the way through. But all of these little troughs and areas that we are clearing out with the bit, they turned out fantastic. I don't exactly know why it worked out a whole lot better than that, other than the fact that this is a down cut bit and we are doing climb milling and this is an up cut bit and it needed to be conventional milling. After looking around online all day long, that has been the consensus that I've seen from everybody is that foam and conventional is a must. If you go through your process, you have the exact bit that you feel like you need for your project. You feel like you've got really great material that's going to mill very well and then you're having ragged, nasty results at the end of it, go into your program, check and see what type of milling direction that you're using. If it's on climb, that's probably gonna be your problem. When I picked up this foam, I was looking for something that was very available to everybody. This is not the best foam to be able to mill on your CNC machine, but it is going to be the most available. I found that there were a few different types and I went with this one because it is the most rigid. Now I did paint these two just to be able to show off the milling so that I wasn't having to do arts and crafts and paint for an entire two days. If you're interested in these, I do have this exact thing as a model, but specifically as 32 by 32 so that it can fit on the smallest version of a Onefinity machine and cut it at home. That model is going to be in Carveco, Vectric, DXF and SVG, as well as there's 40 other SVGs that you can be able to create. Different types of Santas and elves and uh, Christmas trees, candy canes, all different types of stuff that you can be able to make as yard art to be able to put in your yard. Now these I cut as big as I could possibly do and I didn't even need to tile because of how fat these Santas are. I couldn't make them taller without making them wider. So this is the biggest version that I could cut on my machine without jumping up to a five by five machine. And I think that this is a very economical way to do this. This foam itself is like 30 bucks and I cut both of these out of a four by eight sheet, which makes each of them around $15. If you are going to be painting these things, it took me well over one spray paint can just to cover the entire surface, which is why the bottom of this one is white, is because I really wanted to be able to have the contrast to show y'all where it was cutting and how it was doing, because trying to film something that's green and a cutting green, miserable. <laughs> CNC with me just hit over 800 members and we are in the middle of Secret Santa. A few of us have signed up for that and somehow I signed up twice, which means I got two of y'all. So I'm gonna try and make two very different projects to be able to send off to y'all. Next Friday is going to be our very last Christmas theme project, which means we are wrapping up Christmas in July. And in August, we're gonna be getting back to our regular scheduled programming, which is also not true because the very first Friday of August, we're gonna have our very first, our inaugural CNC against me. People are working hard in the background. Stuff's happening. I'm excited to see what happens because it's very much out of my control. See you next Friday. Bye.